Good morning. Welcome to the FAC page. You may be looking at us on LinkedIn and Facebook. Today we're joined by Vivine Reynolds. We kind of renamed her just now. We're calling her Aunt Viv. She is the <laughs> managing director of CoolMarket.com, a company I am referring to as the Amazon with a Jamaican accent. Stick around, you want to learn more. People think that this is the way things are working. So employees, team members, managers, leaders, but in actuality, there's a massive gap between what you think you're delivering and the experience that your customers are actually having on the front line. Uh, launching an online business needs a little bit of a mindset change. Uh, it's not just purchasing the website or the system and then sales come, come through automatically. Uh, there needs to be a little bit of a groundwork. I mean, we are talking about going after the customer. This seems so obvious, but it's not. Because when you are talking in a digital world, this customer now is much more empowered. It's much more criteria. It's much more looking for real relevancy on the way that he's connecting with any engagement, any company, any product or any offer. Well, hello there. Welcome to FAC Live, a first Atlantic commerce show that covers all things e-commerce in the Caribbean. We have guests from different islands who have agreed to share insight into the digital world we have been forced to grow accustomed to. Today, our guest is Vivine Reynolds. She's the managing director of CoolMarket.com. It's Jamaica's largest and most trusted digital marketing markets place offering electrics, appliances, groceries, and much more. She's a mother of two. Her daughter is set to do the CXC this year. I say kudos to her because it's so much pressure trying to balance the two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and her son, like me, is studying filmmaking. So I'm going to chat with him later because we have to exchange notes. So for the next 60 minutes, join me and Chris. Chris is the CEO of First Atlantic Commerce. He's going to cover the technical side of things, while Vivian, Vivian and I are going to have a discussion about her journey and learning about the e-commerce space, which she started in 2006. Before we talk shop, make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook and get notified when we go live, because these discussions are really for you and there's nowhere else online that you're going to find this happening. Trust me when I tell you that. <laughs> All right. So good morning, Vivian. Where are you in the world right now for those who are watching us? Hi, Paula. Good morning to you too. I'm in Jamaica. Sunny, oh, sunny nice. place. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there once and unfortunately it was just on the cusp of the pandemic and I was forced to take the last flight out um, and or be trapped, you know, so... <laughs> Wouldn't, wouldn't I hope to visit. Thing. <laughs> wouldn't be yeah, such a well, bad thing. <laughs> true, true story. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, and Chris, yeah. where are you? I am still in uh, Hamilton, Bermuda. Uh, still have not been anywhere since February last year. Uh, so it's uh, I, I do have my vaccine travel certificate now, though. So I'm hoping <laughs> to get somewhere very soon and hopefully back down to Jamaica again, which I've been to many, many times. Uh, and I'm hoping to uh, uh, to meet up with Vivian in person next time I'm down there. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <sighs> I'm jealous of that vaccine card, uh, but, you know, I'm not going to dwell on that. Today we're here to talk we, about the We just sent our system down to Trinidad, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, wow, Bermuda. okay. Yeah. Wait, what? You, said, yeah. you guys sent vaccines to Trinidad? Yeah, I think so. We have some uh, AstraZeneca that we're sending down. Mm. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah. We've been. Wow, we've been. Okay. A lot of a lot of us have been um, taking that particular vaccine in Jamaica as well. So, yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so let's get into it because as Tina has said in the comments, she's excited about this event. Tina, make sure to slide into the comments if you have any questions because I feel like this is time well spent and if we're getting it, Vivine, let's squeeze as much information as possible. So okay, Vivine, right. can you tell us about the story behind Cool Market? Why did you start this business? Great question, Paula. So we looked around in Jamaica and we recognized that there was a problem that nobody was really solving. And that problem was how do we assist retailers to get their products into the hands of customers who may live in a different part of the country and not know that they have it. So we decided to develop this website, this, this, this business, this marketplace that would allow sellers from all across the country to simply upload their products to our website and then what we would do is find the sellers the buyers rather to buy those products and then once they've bought it then we would deliver and put the money in the seller's bank account and um, we've been doing this since 2013 and it's been doing very very well in fact when the pandemic hit a year ago um we, we, we suddenly realized that we gained a lot of relevance. More persons um, got to know about us. More sellers became interested in, in becoming um, online partners. They were getting ready to upload their products. We were ready to assist them, put their products on. And as a result, they've been able to achieve exponential reach and um, profitability as a result. Wow. Uh, so in Trinidad, there's this, this narrative. I don't want to say myth because, you know, truth is relative nowadays. Uh -huh. uh, there's this narrative that the Caribbean customer doesn't want to use their card, doesn't want to use online shopping. Mm -hmm. What would be your response to that? We actually have stumbled upon that um, quite a bit too. And it's, it's not as bad now as when we started, but when we started, we found that persons were hesitant. There was a lot of scamming going on. And so we had to make sure we helped them to um, overcome that hurdle. But in addition to doing that, what we did is we introduced um, different payment options. So we made it so much easier for them to shop online. So yes, we would always tout um, credit and debit card, but also we gave them the opportunity or the ability to use cash. So once we deliver to their door, they will be able to pay with cash. They'd also be able to do a higher purchase. They could take out a loan. So making it so easy for them to make their purchase, become comfortable with us, because of course you have to get past the hurdle of them not knowing who you are. So you 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 make it easy. They get to know about you. you your posts are out there. Your conversations are out there. You're on the internet. You're all over. So they become accustomed to seeing you around. And then you provide these different payment options that make it so easy for them. And you tout the security and all of that. So today, our biggest um, or the most popular payment method on pool market is credit cards for the by cash. Yeah. Whereas when we started, I, it was the other way around. I love that story because it's it's so interesting to hear your perspective because it comes from a background of data, which is extremely <laughs> important for businesses and business owners to listen to what she has to say. Because a lot of the times the information that we are getting on our social media platforms are based around the North American market, you know, so... Mm -hmm. You know, Caribbean people are a unique group of individuals, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that Chris can attest to that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. And one of the things that came up with uh, creating this event, we do a little polls beforehand, and the question mm -hmm. was asked about the effectiveness of, you know, what's the most difficult step in looking at e-commerce? And mm -hmm. number one was sourcing the payment gateway. So, Chris, <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, a payment Ew. gateway, first, <laughs> first of all, what is a payment gateway for those who don't know what it is? Right. Okay. So, uh, a payment gateway is is a software platform, basically, that connects your website's payment page, ultimately, to the banking and credit card networks. So, 
we provide a integration point between the payment page of your website and ultimately the um, what's called a processor that the bank runs. And that processor's job, uh, one of their jobs is to connect to the card network. So Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover, and you have to have certain certifications because it's all very secure to be able to connect to that. And then once you connect to the, the let's say it's a Visa transaction, that transaction will then go out to the bank that actually issued that credit card and check to see if the funds are available on that card. And if so, we'll hold them and then send back um, that approval request back through the card networks, through the bank, uh, through the FAC gateway platform, and then respond to the website and say, okay, yes, you can proceed with that transaction. Uh, so, you know, that's a really high level overview, but, you know, it's a very complex infrastructure that's behind that. Um, something that you will never really see unless you're in the business, but, you know, it's it's a network that is designed to work at speed. Um, so, you know, you can get those transactions approved in, in milliseconds. Uh, it's designed to be very secure, um, which, you know, is, is is why there's obviously some costs associated with uh, receiving those transactions. Um, but it's also designed to provide accountability too. So, you know, this is this, it's an, a ginormous general ledger to a degree. So, you know, they're all parties have to agree that that transaction, you know, is, is allowed to happen and that those, the money that's captured there is gonna ultimately end up in, in your bank account. But, you know, it's interesting what Vivian was saying about cards becoming the most popular method now and you know what that does is it provides you also with um some response that say that you know if you're not happy with what happened with that transaction or the product you bought or the service that you received you are able to to then go back and say to your bank well i didn't receive this i didn't do that transaction um i didn't get what i actually paid for and you can what's called charge back that transaction um, when you're dealing with cash um, as an individual, it's very difficult to to get that that recourse to, to go back and say, well, hold on a second, I, I didn't get this or I didn't do this. Um, and the cash-based transaction doesn't give you a lot of protection as an individual. And I think what you'll see in in, in Jamaica as well is that you know now that the multi-link sort of Jets network card is going to be branded. That's going to be banded Visa or MasterCard. That suddenly, you know, seventy-five percent of the population that might not have had a credit card will suddenly have a card that they can use online because those cards have been traditionally just at the point of sale or ATMs, and now they're going to have a Visa or MasterCard logo on them. You'll be able to use those cards online. So suddenly, you're going to get access to a much greater percentage of the population to be able to grow your online business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's some key takeaways, guys. If you're just joining us, we're here having a discussion with Vivine from coolmarket.com, as well as the CEO of First Atlantic Commerce, Chris. And we're here to have a discussion around her journey in the e-commerce space because it is possible in the Caribbean, guys. We are, it is possible, okay? Uh, and earlier, Vivine mentioned that, you know, there was this sort of, uh, I guess, is it a learning curve, a transition from people being sort of not sure if they should use their card or credit not card. to now credit card to yeah. now having that as a number one form of payment. So yes. do you have any advice for a company that is trying to transition online and concern about, you know, all these different things they have to learn and all these multiple pieces of information they have to be able to translate to their customer. What would be your key takeaway or number one advice you'd give to that entrepreneur? Okay. I would say to that entrepreneur that what you have to do is establish your credibility, right? Your customers that are going to be buying on your website need to be comfortable. They need to know that the security is there. So once you've established credibility, you've set up your website in the most secure way, just like Chris said, with the payment system, it has to the payment network, it has to be secure. It's the same thing with your website. Because when a customer comes on your website, that customer needs to feel like I am doing this transaction. It's my transaction. It's not being exposed to the whole world. My credit card information is safe. 
nobody else will know what I'm buying because, hey, this is my business. And when I buy my products, I will be able to get them within the time frame that you set. So once you've established all of that, you, you, you've established your credibility, you've developed um, um, that convenience for the customer, you've made people feel comfortable to come and do business with you, then your customers will come and they will keep coming back. As somebody who has been in the marketing space for over a decade, amen. <laughs> <laughs> because we have to establish that level of uh, sort of awareness and confidence that the person who is about to take my private my private information is mm -hmm. not going to do something you know nefarious with it. And I want I want to be able to ask Chris because we did have in previous episodes a uh, company international business count come on and share some of the insights into all these different cybersecurity angles and conversations that went over my head completely. But for those who may not understand, you know, share some of that information because the idea of being, you know, there was a recent robbery in Barbados, literally happened in the bank. The person was dressed like a woman with the mask and shades. Um, the meme was the person was looking to establish a transaction because they were a man dressed as a woman. Think about that later. Um, but I mean, there's certain, you know, security issues when you look at it in real time, but from a digital perspective these are different problems what type of you yeah. know uh security features should a small business think about when they're looking to explore e-commerce yeah and there's there's a lot to consider there and just you know to add to your story you know the cash is you know there is a lot of security issues around cash as as we know um so you know I, one of the stories i had from jamaica is that we were working with a, a company there who um they they had an ATM across the road from their billing office, and people would go to get cash from the ATM to then go into the building with to pay their bill, but they could have used the card that they just went across the road and got cash out of the ATM with. Um, and so again, it's just that mindset around cash. But then somebody figured that out and started robbing people that were coming from the ATM going into the into the building. So, you know, there's there's a lot of issues with, around cash and and you know people do get nervous, you know, when you talk about accepting payments online. Um, but there are you know a lot of um, a lot of steps you can take to make sure that that you know your card is safe and you as a business uh, are safe in accepting those transactions online. So one of the things that we we talk about, you know, is is you know uh, taking all the the data out of the system. So we have this service what we call tokenization, which takes all the credit card data out of the out of your system, out of your website environment, out of your server environment. So you can, if you have repeat customers, you can allow them to store a card on file. That would get stored in our system. And we're allowed to do that because we are a, what's called a PCI DSS level one certified payment gateway, which is a very fancy term of saying that we have a very strong security audit every year um, that takes about three months to, to pass uh, and go through, costs an awful lot of money. And we make sure that we we're able to pass that and store all that credit card data and connect to all the network securely. Um, you know, when you're, when you're actually looking at your transactions as a business, there's multiple things you can do on there as well. You know, make sure that you're you're validating the data in the um, in the checkout page, right? So you're passing on all the right data to to a payment gateway cost to check uh, wow. things like 3D Secure, um, so which is the verified by Visa Mastercard Secure Code. Um, that is a way for you, if the card hold, if the person who's buying on your website has enrolled their card in 3D Secure, and you are a 3D Secure merchant, it will basically throw up a separate window and ask that person for their password that's associated with that card. So it's kind of like an online pen, and and even if that card is not enrolled, uh, and you as a merchant are, it will still attempt to validate that that in a, as a 3D Secure transaction. But if that card's issuer doesn't participate you still get certain liability shift 
on that mm -hmm. transaction. So if somebody comes back and says, I didn't do that transaction, that's a fraudulent transaction. If you try to authenticate 3D Secure, that chargeback would automatically get represented back to the issuer of the card. So you're protected as a merchant. Um, then there are other steps you can take in terms of um, anti-fraud platforms. So we, you mentioned Count earlier. We have a very strong partnership with Count. Um, they are a very large anti-fraud um, system that is based out of the US. Uh, people like Braintree, White Label, and Chase Payment Tech, Spotify uses them. We have a lot of customers within the Caribbean and Central America that use them. And you can set up thousands of rules within the system to help protect yourself uh, within there as well. So, uh, and but also, you know, the the last thing I'll say on that is that make sure you use the right partners. Right? You know, when it comes to technology, you know, everybody's got a, you know, a brother or a sister or a cousin that, you know, knows something about computers. Um, you know, and they might not be the right people to work with, you know, work, work with industry partners, work with people that have got a proven track record, work with people that have the proper certifications to be in the business that they're in, especially when it comes to payments. So we're going to go on a quick break, but the comment section is lit. And we have a lot of questions that need some attention. And one in particular, Keneal, not an entrepreneur cannot use word of mouth. We don't have enough time, Keneal. I, I, I know what you're trying to say, but that's difficult. But we'll touch on that on the break. We'll be right back. Welcome. Welcome back to FAC Live, a first Atlantic commerce show that covers all things e-commerce in the Caribbean. Today, we are, I mean, to say that we've crossed borders is insane. That's one of the positive things uh, within this lockdown. I am in Trinidad and Tobago. Devine is the managing director of coolmarket.com and she's in Jamaica. And Chris Burns, he is the CEO of First Atlantic Commerce and he is in Bermuda. You cannot get any more connected than this show, guys. Like, seriously, just smash that follow button because this content is really if you want to learn about e-commerce in the Caribbean, especially if you are, you know, in this digital world we are forced to live in, you have to survive, right? And your customers are using Amazon. So, um, hi, get a piece of that money. All right. So <laughs> as it relates to what we've covered in the last 30 minutes, it's been such a, you know, it's, it's a great uh, insight into e-commerce, but I want to have sort of a, a touch on some of these questions because I have some questions too, but we're here for the people. We're here for the people. Yes. So the first one is uh, about what are the fees you charge to vendors uploading their products from Leroy? Okay, so there, there are actually no fees. That's the beauty about um, enrolling on Cool Market. It's absolutely free. There's no risk. We'll even help you to digitize and upload your products. Uh, once the products are sold, then there is a, a fee, 15%, and that's um, that includes delivery, credit card, everything. And we just deposit that in your bank account as soon as possible after the sale has been made. And you said 15, what, 1550? 15, 15. Okay, just making sure. All right, Leroy, that answers your next question because he was concerned for you. He wanted to know how you were making money. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> he was Thank very you. concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. <laughs> We have you covered, don't worry. Um, and then Leroy also wants to know for you, Chris, how does someone in the Caribbean use your gateway on their website? So the one of the first things that we'd say you should do is uh, register on our website. So the uh, the contact section on firstatlanticcommerce.com. Um, so that will put you in touch with our with our business development team, and they will walk you through the process. So because we are connected to pretty much every bank in the Caribbean that does e-commerce acquiring, 
we we can help you with your options. Um, so whether it's you know Scotiabank Bank or RBC or uh, NCB in Jamaica, you know we we're connected to all of them. So first we'll want to understand which which bank you want to work with, and after that um, we'll guide you to the right person, specifically the right person at whichever bank it is, to apply for what's called an e-commerce merchant account. So that is different to a point of sale merchant account. It's different just to a business bank account or a personal checking account. It's a specific account that you have to apply for to be able to accept um, transactions from, from an online, from e-commerce, from credit card transactions. And once that process is underway and you've been approved for that account, then we will work with you uh, through the process of integrating to our gateway. So we have a couple of different methods that you can use for that. Uh, we have a, what's called a hosted payment page, and then we also have a direct API integration that gives you access to all the different products and, and services that we have. But the first step, um, if you don't know where to, where to begin, is go onto our website, firstlandoncommerce.com, uh, click on the Contact Us section, and that will put you in, in touch with, a, with an e-commerce expert that will help you through the process. You can also, you don't have to go too far if you go into the bio section of the LinkedIn page of First Atlantic Commerce on LinkedIn or on Facebook. There is a contact us section. Just click that and it'll take you right to the URL. We have you covered. Don't worry. There's also a conversation around the types of products that can be on coolmarket.com. Tina has been doing a great job of responding to the, the <laughs> comments, but I would like to expand your discussion in the live session as well. So you want to share some insight on that, Vivian? Absolutely. So we aim to provide everything that a customer needs on Cool Market. Um, of course, the products that are there are usually what you're going to find in a retailer's store. So... Um, so far, we have electronics, appliances, home and garden products, groceries, back-to-school items, um, office supplies. Oh, my gosh. You name it, we have it. <laughs> and and the yeah. products that I, I want to just make a, um, a point, because this is a question customers ask all the time. Are the products that are available on cool market, cool markets? Not necessarily. 99% of everything that's found on Cool Market are there because we have sellers that have uploaded those products. Great. That's great insight. And I, I want to kind of step back to what does it mean to uh, shop there? You know, as a customer, what is the experience they're going to? engage with once they go on coolmarket.com. Just like a, f a couple steps in terms of what the customer experience is, because sometimes I feel we are, we are not clear or certain because we have so many different ideas. Sometimes mm -hmm. it could be a little jumbled as to the customer's journey. So you could share that uh, with coolmarket.com. Of course, absolutely. So once you go on there, there's a nice, um, search bar that enables you to search for whatever product it is that you need. Um, alternately, you may select from the drop down menu, all of the items that you want would be there. You select the item that you want, you put it in your shopping cart, or that happens automatically once you've selected it. You go to the checkout page, you enter your shipping address, your credit card details, you go to checkout. Once you do that, the item is delivered to the address that you, you you indicated within two business days. Sometimes you get it much earlier. So is it, would you compare it to Amazon? Because it is a space, amazon.com within the Caribbean, I've looked at these stats, has always been in the top 10 visitor sites across the Caribbean, including Jamaica. So is that a familiar space? And how would you compare yourself to that site? Okay, great question. The concept, the business concept we have is very similar to Amazon, where we help hundreds. I know Amazon does thousands, maybe millions of sellers to, to realize profitability. Of course, Jamaica is much smaller, but we help um, Jamaican sellers to achieve reach and profitability. And the experience that a customer has will be very similar in the sense that you're buying from multiple sellers, 
you are able to buy just as many products as you want. You can search for the products, whatever it is, you can compare. You're able to see different products at different prices from the different vendors and you choose the one you want. You put it in your shopping cart and you get it delivered to you. And on the back end now, we deposit that money in the seller's account within a very short time. Let's talk about that time. Let's mm -hmm. talk about, because that's a concern. And yes. as somebody who has used PayPal in the past, usually there's this 30 day wait. It is painful, especially if you have a small business. Uh, mm -hmm. And this question may be directed to Chris. W what is that time frame mm -hmm. like? Because you're going from a customer uh, using their information, giving you their money, which is, you know, coolmarket.com. And once that customer gets that product delivered as a business owner, I want my money. <laughs> and it's difficult when you are using uh, platforms and other options that are looking at the US space because they are not configured to the local market because we have, as I mentioned earlier, our unique <laughs> value proposition inclusive <laughs> of the financial sector. So share some insight on what it means to utilize the FAC payment gateway as a business owner. Yeah, thanks. And so the, the big difference here is, you know, between us and somebody like PayPal or, or Stripe, for example, is that we settle locally. Um, so we, as a, as a gateway platform, have, have taken the time over, over a number of years to integrate directly to local banks within the Caribbean. Um, so, you know, with, in Jamaica, for example, you know, we, we're connected to just about every e-commerce acquiring bank there. So what that means is that you're able to um, price and, and receive Jamaica dollars. And if the bank supports it as well, you can price and receive U.S. dollars. Um, so if you're using, say, PayPal, for example, um, which is which is very hard to do um, in <laughs> terms of, of being a business, um, you can't actually set up a, you know, as a Jamaican business with with PayPal and, and receive there. Um, some people have done it with through personal accounts. But then, as you say, that money gets deposited to PayPal and then you've got, and that will be in US dollars. And then you've got to bring that back and repatriate that back into, into the Jamaican system, for example. Um, so, which is, you know, time consuming, costly in terms of, of wires. Uh, you will also, you're also sort of bleeding sort of Forex out of the, out of the system as well, which is, which is not very helpful either. Um, so our system is designed to settle locally. Um, so, you know, the, the authorization and the hold on the funds is done pretty much instantaneously. Um, how uh, usually settlement is about two days after the actual capture of the transaction, but daily. So it would be in arrears. So, you know, if you started on Monday, you'd get your first payment on Wednesday and then every day, every business day after that, um, but two days in arrears. Um, so that's a massive difference between between using a sort of a PayPal or a Stripe, for example, um, and also you can receive local currency. So, but the platform is also designed to support international transactions as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like about the marketplace is, is that you know where people will, you know, there's a big sort of diaspora, um, you know, where you know, say Jamaicans are living everywhere in the world, but they want some local local products, something that they remember from home. And, and a marketplace is a fantastic place to be able to, to do that. And if you're a seller on there as well, you know, somebody might not be coming on there to, to find um, your specific product, but they might come across it um, from being on that marketplace and searching around to go, okay, what else do they have? And so your exposure becomes uh, much greater. Uh, and I think when you're dealing with, you know, the payment side of it, you know, you need to be as flexible as possible because you, you, you want to take local currency and you can only do that in each country. Uh, because if you don't, if you're just charging in US dollars as well, what happens is that, you know, if somebody comes on with a locally issued credit card and it's in local currency, for example, and you're charging in US dollars, that card holder is going to get uh, potentially an FX fee, a foreign transaction, uh, uh, foreign, uh, foreign currency charge on that on your card, and so the amount that you see on your card might be different to the amount that you see on the website, which is again causes confusion, sometimes causes chargebacks, 
sometimes people asking for refunds because they, they say, well, this is this is not the price that's on the website. So there is you know this big push, not just in the Caribbean, but everywhere from a payments perspective about enabling local payments to, to create this much more seamless um, and non-confusing experience um, for, for marketplaces. My, my internet was giving me some trouble. So you spoke about the diaspora, which I think is one of the most untapped resources from Caribbean entrepreneurs. I can't stress this enough. Vivian, do you have any information on your diaspora customers? Can you like spew out sort of like a percentage? Uh, we we have about 5% of our customer base now that's um, from the diaspora and that's that's growing steadily, I must say. The majority of our diaspora com customers come from the United States. So there's the United States, then there's Canada, and there's also England. Um, and ever since COVID-19, that has grown exponentially. And what we find is that most of our diaspora customers buy groceries and other items for their relatives back home. And then we have the opportunity now to deliver to their customers. And what's great is that once you've given them a good experience, they just keep coming back, which is always something that any entrepreneur would want in their business. Gosh, that sounds, that brings me back in memories when I wa was walking down um, a street in London and I saw Chubby. I would not <laughs> drink Chubby for the life of me if I am in Trinidad, but I saw that in Trinidad. I was like, oh my gosh, look at this sugar water that's carbonated. I want this now. <laughs> And yeah. equivalent is definitely true with what you've you've been able to achieve here with coolmarket.com. I want to ask, you know, we have a com some comments in this uh, in this section on um, SSL se uh, security certificate, but I will touch on that for a minute. But before I do, I want to continue with Vivian on the actual setup of coolmarket.com. Who were the top three people you had a discussion with? Um, before starting this business in terms of executing the URL, the website, building it up? What, where did that start? Hmm, that's a great question. So we had to speak with sellers. We had to speak with payment providers. And we had to speak with delivery partners. So when we started at first, let me start from the bottom of delivery partners. We did not have our own delivery um, company. So we had to work with third party providers. Now it was important for us that this provider would um, deliver customers products island wide. And so we went for two specific ones. One was in the business for a long time, was very familiar with Jamaica, would deliver island wide and that was important. And it was also important that our deliver partners would deliver within the time frame that we set. So having done that, having found that partner, we've worked with that partner for years. We still do. Then in terms of the bank, we started working with one bank and um, it was a little bit challenging for a while. And then we switched. So that, that became a little bit easier for customers because with the previous relationship, customers had to do a verification process. It was not very friendly and the customers hated that. So we switched to a, a new bank and the new bank allowed customers to um, just go ahead with their transaction. It would happen seamlessly the way you would have your transactions happen if you made a purchase in North America or from a North American um, marketplace. And then we had to find sellers. Who are the persons that are going to be on our website to provide the products that the customers would buy? So we started looking around for sellers large sellers, medium-sized sellers, smaller sellers, because we wanted to represent a wide cross-section of sellers within Jamaica. And so having established our ecosystem, we were now ready to start going going live. Wow. I love that 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 um, story because in my mind, I'm thinking, because a lot of times you get questions too, and when people are going into a business, they think the website first, but your ecosystem happens mm -hmm. offline. Mm -hmm. So you build that ecosystem. Yes. And then once you've secured that, what was the next step? Did you sit down with a web website developer? 
interestingly, we have all of our building was done in house. So we have our own um, IT department, an excellent IT department. So a lot of the research that was necessary to bring that to bear was done by them. And they decided that we would find one of the best um, mm, support system, uh, the best marketplace that we could use. There was Shopify, there was Magento. We decided to go with Magento. And um, we've upgraded over time to make it relevant and to make it easy for our customers to, to do business with us. Yeah. Great. We have a question and comments from Drew Marie on the SSL certificate. We're going to answer that after the break. So I will see you on the other side. All right. <laughs> Welcome back to FSC Live, a First Atlantic commerce show that covers all things e-commerce in the Caribbean. We're here with Vivine Reynolds. She is the managing director of coolmarket.com. Her story is amazing. And if you want to learn about e-commerce in the Caribbean, stick around, slide into your comments, let us know. Even post live, we do answer your questions. So it's fine if you're watching this on a replay. We're also joined by Chris Burns. He is the CEO of First Atlantic Commerce, and we're about to ask him some technical questions. So we have Drew Marie, and she wants to know, with the emphasis on security, are there other steps beyond an SSL certificate, for example, that an entrepreneur can do to secure their website and payment gain? <coughs> Sure. So an, an SSL certificate is, is a must. Um, so, and, you know, and, and if anybody is wondering what, what that sort of physically looks like. So if you go up to the, you know, the URL um, and you look at the little padlock uh, that's mm -hmm. on the top there. Um, so if that is red, then you are, you are not SSL. You don't have a valid SSL certificate. It's uh, not a secure connection and you should leave whatever website you're on immediately for that um, is, is my honest opinion on that. Um, and you can also check, you know, when you when you click on these certificates as well, that, you know, they are actually registered to the business um, that, you know, the website that you're on, for example. So we, but we mandate that you have to have an SSL certificate to actually connect to our gateway. Um, and then we have a couple of different methods that we use to connect to the gateway. So there is, um, one which is called an API integration. So it is, it's basically the, um, the interface to come directly into our gateway um, via the secure connection, that sort of secure handshake um, connection to our, to our gateway. Um, and then that is done directly with the payment page, your, your own payment page, which will be held in your own sort of server type environment. Now, we also have another integration method, which is the hosted payment page, um, which is basically a, a payment page that is hosted on our servers in our environment. So when it comes time for the person to pay, your website will redirect. And I'm not saying it's not like a PayPal redirect where it takes you to a completely different looking site, and you have to, you know, which causes abandonment on the transaction because people get concerned. Ours, if you look at the URL, you will see a change in the URL, but the hosted payment page can be customized to look and feel like the rest of your website. But that page is actually physically held on our service. So when they enter the sensitive credit card data, um, that's actually being entered in on our servers. And then we send the transaction out from there to be approved and, and capture the funds. So that is an extra step you can, uh, you can take to help secure your, your website environment for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, you know, when you're using, you know, if you're using different shopping cart platforms, you know, obviously, you know, make sure you do your research, find out who they are, find out what their background is, what their credentials are. You know, if you're using a third party developer, like Vivian said, you know, they have the luxury of, of doing that in house and they know who they're working with and they can trust the team that's there, but if you're using a third party, you really need to vet them properly if they're going to do an integration on your behalf. 
um, and take references, make sure that they are who they say they are, uh, because you don't want somebody developing, you know, something with the hook in it that's stealing credit card data out of your system, for example. Um, and never store credit card data. <laughs> I can't say that enough times uh, in these sessions. You know, at no, in, under no circumstances should you be storing credit card data in any of your environments? And you know, we've had people say, well, well, we have it in an Excel spreadsheet with a password. Okay. No, 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 no. That is the one, it is the biggest no when it comes to, to taking payments online or, or doing any sort of payment operation. You know, make sure you outsource all that to a trusted third party like ourselves um, that is certified every year to, to hold credit card data, to process credit card data. I, I I would also add to the SSL certificate conversation that from a marketing perspective, it affects your SEO. So within your search engine optimization, if you don't have that little lock that says you are HTTPS, yes. you're going to be further and further down from the search. Because if you're not in the front page, where, where are you actually? You're nowhere, right? Okay, so we have a, another question here. If you're just joining us, we did have Vivian from coolmarket.com mention that there was a transition from, you know, people not comfortable using their card. She did mention giving multiple options to the consumer. But we have a question here from Prem, which I think is such a great question. Thanks for that, Prem. You really bring in some meat into the discussion. <laughs> How do you establish the credibility of the sellers? Okay, so the sellers, what we do is we go through a verification process. So once they've registered, we have a checklist that we go through. We ask them certain questions. We make sure that they're in business, that they're registered in business. They have certain, they have satisfied certain government criteria and they have products <laughs> to sell and that those products can be sold on cool market you know you don't want to put any contraband or anything that <laughs> that's not saleable on the site <laughs> so we have to establish all of that and and then we go ahead and we provide training for them to be able to upload their products and if they need our assistance we also assist with that Great. We have another question from Dominique. I'm not clear on it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, yes. So hopefully you guys will be able to, to touch on it. So how do you compete with social media? Meaning, how do you convince users to use your, your website instead of using social media as a free alternative? That is actually a great question. because, And that question has come up quite a bit, um, especially with Facebook and Instagram having their own e-commerce um, capability. So in terms of competing, I want to say we compete and I also want to say we use social media as well. So in terms of competing, we Cool Market offer, offers what I call an end-to-end -end solution where social media doesn't. So we provide customers with choice you go to one stop, one shop, the cool market shop, and you find a plethora of products. In addition to your being able to find all those products, we provide you with payment solution. Unfortunately for us in the Caribbean and definitely in Jamaica, you can't integrate your payment provider um, solution with um, your social media website. With cool market, all of that is um, provided for and once the customer has made a purchase, then we deliver. So from the retailer's store to the customer's door, that's the solution we provide, whereas social media does not do that. Now, in terms of utilizing social media, we recognize that a number of customers and those customers that we serve are on social media. So in order to find them, it is important that we also um, enable customers to make purchases purchases utilizing the social media platforms. So we have used the social media platforms to, to do live, live, live stream selling. And this has worked for us in the past. It's not something we're doing actively right now, but we do recognize that our customers, our customers are on social media. And in order to reach them, we have to find them where they are. 
I love that. I, I actually was privy to a Facebook live notification of Mac doing a live stream event for like two hours. It was basically the HSN channel takeover, but I found it so interesting because obviously I went to the Mac.com website right after, as you can tell, I'm a little obsessed with makeup, but, um, <laughs> It works because it's it's a complement to what you're doing. I don't see it as, uh, you know, you mentioned that earlier. It's mm -hmm. That's where your customers are. And Facebook mm -hmm. is the number one visited site on social media in the mm -hmm. Caribbean. Do, 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 don't worry what CNN tell you. Trust huh? me when I say <laughs> Facebook is where they are. Don't even try to fight it. Uh, so we have another question from Leroy. Leroy is just blazing up the comment <laughs> section. How do the seller's products get to the delivery company to be delivered? So we pick up from the seller's locations and then we deliver to the customer. So we keep it nice and simple. Wow. Okay. That's uh, question answered. All right. So I'm going to head over to a poll section we had in the event side of things on LinkedIn. And it was around the difficulty in setting up your online marketplace in the Caribbean. And one of the things that came up was created an automated model. So I'm assuming it's sort of like a subscription based meant like, you know, setup. So Chris, can you touch on that a bit? Is that an option in the payment gateway ecosystem in the Caribbean? Yeah, it is. Um, so we have a couple of different ways that we we deal with that. So first is, you know, automation would be recurring payments. So we have a, a method that if you have a, a fixed amount on a fixed schedule that you want to charge um, for whatever you're selling, you can enable we can enable that for you within the gateway. Um, so we could charge fifty dollars once a month for the next 12 months on the card. And again, that's all automated in our system and all the credit card data is stored in our system. So it takes it out from there. And you know that month, they'll get automatically debited from the card and automatically de deposited within your bank account. Um, what we see a lot of is using the, the tokenization service. Um, so this is if you have repeat customers, like Cool Market will have, in terms of, OK, so that, that customer is going to set up a, a profile, that buyer is going to set up a profile. Uh, and then once they've made their first purchase, they can choose to store that card on file. Um, and basically what happens there is that the, the client will send us the card number with the transaction. We'll take the card number, we'll encrypt it. We will assign what we call a token to it, which is basically an alphanumeric value and send that token back to our, our merchants who can then store the token against their customer's profile. So next time they come in and they make a purchase and they choose to pay with card on file, all the merchant has to do is send us the amount and the token, and then we'll detokenize that and decrypt the card number in our system and send that out for processing and then send back the response. So not only is that a, a much more secure way to do it, but it, it you know it creates a much better buying experience. You know, and, and again, we've talked about this before in terms of you know going on to your know, website where you know and, and We've talked about Amazon and, and Cool Market being an example of this as well, where you've gone on to buy one particular thing, but you've seen something else, and it's so easy to buy because you have these these cards on file with these one-click purchase type scenarios that you end up buying five or six other things um, that you didn't think you were going to buy in, in, in the first place. That's obviously great for for the marketplace. But it's also great for the people that are selling on the marketplace. You know, as we talked about a little bit earlier as well. Because you said, well, if you like this, you maybe you'll like this. Or customers who bought this also bought this, this, and this, uh, and that just you know generates more more um, income in the whole ecosystem uh, because people are seeing things that it's uh, that they they didn't weren't necessarily exposed to before. before. Um, so yeah, and then I think you know with with just recurring payments in general, you know it's it's just a it's just a better method. To manage your accounts receivable as well, right? So if you're, you know, rather than trying to hunt people down um, every month or get a check or whatever that might be, uh, you know, when you automate it within the system, that that's much better. And then we've seen a lot of automation around like bots, example, for example, in chats, where people, you know, fast food. We've seen uh, we have a, a few customers in the fast food space now within in the Caribbean that have an automated um, purchasing 
experience within with just within the chatbot. So it's good, you know, I want this, you know, can I add this? And then it throws up a payment link within it as well. And you're able to make a purchase right then and there. I love the idea of automation creating enough data for sales because ultimately that's what it is, right? You've you've built enough data to understand the customer. And I felt like you were calling out on me because I went on Amazon last month to check out the price of an Apple pen. Tell me why did I buy a kettle? Because I saw it $10 less. In my defense, it's a special kettle. It's for specifically for coffee. But it was interesting because I did not have to take off my card. I did not have to go, you know, that whole feeling of guiltiness did not happen because all I needed to do was click buy now. And I think that's so important that a lot of us are trying to figure out that type of consumer behavior is different than walking into a physical store. I think that's such an interesting point. Uh, and maybe Vivine, you could share some insight on some of the things that you guys learned on coolmarket.com. All right, so in terms of making it easy for the customer to buy, you're going to make sure that where the customer first goes to, and that's usually most customers land on their own homepage. So you wanna make sure that you put your frequently bought products there. What customers usually are buying, what's trending. And once you do that, you're, you're able to use um, data. You're able to see what customers are looking at, what they're clicking on, what they're buying. And you just make sure that that is always, always, always there. And just to go back to something you said and something they are, um, someone asked before about um, sellers and delivery, right? Once a customer gets onto a marketplace, that customer can buy from 10, 15 different sellers, right? So that works for the sellers on our platform because you give them the ability to showcase their products and to get customers to buy that. So you put those products where customers are most likely to see those products. Now, once that purchase is made, we have the responsibility to pick up from the multiple sellers, consolidate those products and deliver to the customer. And so that's the beauty about a marketplace in comparison to a regular online store. Uh, and as you're explaining it, it, I'm just thinking about a supermarket. It's the same concept. You know, you go on the shelf and you have a choice because you're likely to be more. It's all about convenience. The bottom line is convenience. Where can I do this one stop shop? And I think that's mm -hmm. what people are willing to make a little effort on. I, I also want from a personal perspective, <laughs> trying to mark your business here. Is there a plan for a mobile app or is it there already? There is plan. It's actually, I'm going to say it's there already because we're so close. But because our site was always mobile responsive, it's not something that was priority for us. But now it's going to be there in a very short time. My gosh. I feel a sense of pride and I don't even have shares in your business. <laughs> like, I, it's like, well done. Doing yeah, the data. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So we have a question here from OC Phillips. Uh, seeing that cool market is built on Magento 2, how do you guys drive traffic in terms of product search and product discovery? Uh, there's a mention about Amazon, but are you guys doing anything to drive search traffic? Yes. So it starts with how the products are uploaded to the website. We have to make sure that the, the products are SEO friendly and that goes with um, training your vendors what to put in the description. Make sure there's no plagiarism, ensure that the when a customer is searching, they can actually find that product based on the, the descriptions you, you've made. Um, we advertise, we advertise on Facebook, social media, we use various digital channels to make sure customers can know about us. And we try to stay relevant in terms of keeping our website up to date. Right, so is there, uh, uh, I would ask actually, who, how much uh, on your team in terms of managing a website? Is it a web developer, marketing? Like what, what does that team look like? And what are their specific skill sets? Because I feel it's important to identify their different skill sets. Oh my goodness. So there are, there's a marketing department, there's the IT department. The IT department works with developers. 
you have the back office support, they manage customer care, you have accounting, you have, oh my God, so many different, we work with graphic designers, content developers, <laughs> so many different persons are a part of this, this ecosystem that just makes one seamless marketplace. I appreciate that answer. And I want you to, as you close off, to give a piece of advice to an entrepreneur who is trying to explore the e-commerce space for the first time. What would be the number one thing you'll tell them? Okay, so you can go and you can build your website on your own. Um, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge for you because then you have to think of all the security issues that um, Chris spoke about earlier and you have to think about hosting and all those um, different persons that I talked about that are part of our ecosystem. Or you can go to a marketplace like Food Market where they take care of all, where we take care of all of that for you and make it makes it so seamless and easy for you to make money, for you to achieve reach and profitability in one stop. And on that note, I, I, can't, I can't say it any better myself. Thank you so much to Chris and Vivine. Chris is in Bermuda, Vivine is in Jamaica. And we had a really robust conversation around the marketplace, specifically in Jamaica. And in two weeks time, which is the 8th of June, same time, same place, we're going to have a similar conversation, but from somebody who has a Trinidad background. I know we have different accents, but the problems remain the same. You have nowhere to go if you're from Trinidad and Tobago because we have state of emergency. So sit, sit down. <laughs> I will see you in two weeks. And but in terms of the other Caribbean islands, please join us. These conversations are worthwhile as we learn to navigate into the digital world. I will see you in uh, on the 8th of June and our next event. Bye guys.